All right, people, we're here for the next installment in the bike build series. Um, you've obviously watched the others. If you haven't, go back, like, subscribe, and watch the other videos. So the last thing that we just had done was the suspension. So Mal and Ben at Sato's, um, just done front and rear suspension. So we've had the bike lowered 25 mil, because I'm a short ass. Um, and these suffer from a lot of low, not slow speed, 40, 50 kilometer an hour. The front wheel deflects a lot, going over a sort of rough, scraggly shit. Um, so they've put new valve, I don't know what you call them, valve blocks in each fork, um, which changes the, the valving, gives us more adjustability, and um, resprung it to suit my weight. You know, these bikes all come sprung, what, 70, 70 to 75 kilos is what. Most manufacturers think we weigh, um, we don't. So yeah, so the springs have been upgraded front and rear, valving been upgraded front and rear. They've also put some um, uh, preload adjusters in the front, um, just cause it's gonna put the five litre Raid Garage fuel cell in here. Um, and when I'm loaded, big trips, whatever, I can just add a little bit more preload, you know, to make it handle how it should. The front preload adjuster is probably a bit of a wank and you don't really need one. Um, for the rear, definitely, um, you know, when you ride a day pack, day trip, you, to a, a long weekend trip, you know, you're probably 20 kilos different. So having a preload adjuster on the rear spring to set the sag um, is well worth the money. Um, I'll go into how the sag thing goes in a minute. Um, what else have they done? That's about it. So, um, you know, we're all, fuck. Be realistic when you do go and get your, your suspension done. Um, everybody wants to lie about the scales, but if you want the bike to handle properly, be realistic. You know, I'm 95 kilos. All your gear, just for a day trip, you know, backpack, boots, pants, jacket, helmet, you know, that, that's gonna be upwards, you're gonna be 105 kilos. So when you looked at the bikes come standard, rated for 70 to 75 kilos, um, you can see why upgrading the springs is almost a must um, so you know you've got rebound and compression dampening one compression dampening slows the fork down as it compresses rebound slows the fork down as it extends um, so if you're got too much compression it's going to be very harsh you know you're going to hit things and it's just going to bang bang back through your wrists um, you've got too much rebound when you're hitting a lot of little bumps, the fork's not going to have a time to to extend again fully um, in between, you know, the hits. So eventually, you know, five or six hits down the track, the forks are just going to bottom out again, bang, bang, bang. So there's a happy medium to get it right. Now, if the you got the right springs, right valving in it, you set the, do yourself a favor, set your clickers to the middle. They usually be 20 clicks each way from nothing to full so set of 10 11 clicks in the middle if you can if you can get the bike right going two or three clicks each way where you're comfortable from the middle setting then you're pretty on par with your springs and your and your valving rate if you're finding you've got to change shit loads then you need to go back to your suspension guy or get your suspension done um, same with the rear um, sags are a very important thing in the rear you know the, the the shocks are on a leverage thing so you know shocks only got three four inches of travel and you got the best part of you know adventure bikes 250 mil of travel motocross bikes are upwards of 300 mil travel so that sag you want to be a third of the overall travel so you got a 300 mil travel bike you want your sag to be around the 100 100 millimeter mark um, I'll show you what that means in a second um, otherwise you know if you've your shock's not in its efficient range um, and the same thing with the preload and, and um, yeah, preload sorry compression and dampening too that's all adjustable same deal if it's all set up right two or three clicks from the middle should be should be pretty good um, now if the the set and the sag on the bike so the sag is the free weight from here to when you're sitting on it, how much the bike will sag down. Um, in this case, 
you know, mine's about 70 mil because of the height of the bike. Um, if you've got to put any more than sort of 10, 15 mil preload on the spring to get that, again, you need a new spring um, or one for your weight. Um, so it, there's many ways, you know, you, you'll, the pros will tell you, you know, they prefer 105 instead of 100. We're not going to know the difference for what we're doing. The professionals, yeah, they do. But you set the bike up as a general rule, it's going to be a lot nicer to ride. Same thing with my setup video previously on position and bar setup and everything. It's all about saving your energy so you can ride longer, ride better and not fall off. Um, once you start getting fatigued, you're going to start falling off. So if suspension's not set up for you, then you know the bike will become more tiring to ride. Um, and accidents, that's when accidents happen, besides the stupid ones when you've been a dick. Um, but anyway, so I brought a tape measure. I'm going to have to move the camera to show you, but I brought a tape measure just to roughly show you how to set the sag. So we're just going to use, I'm by myself so I can't sit on it to, to show you. Um, but basically just pick a point, usually you pick the centre of the center of the axle, come up to like this bolt or the end of the blinker. So, you know, that's 620. So when you sit on it, you want this gap to come down you know, a 30 suspension travel, and that is the sag. I can guarantee you now, if you're riding just standard sprung bikes, you know, say it's an enduro, uh, adventure bike, usually 250 odd mil of travel, um, I can guarantee you, you're probably gonna have over, well over 100 mil of sag, because you're too heavy for the spring that's, the spring that's on it. Um, but anyway, so Sutter's have done that, and um, the good thing with the preload adjusters for the rear, I'm actually still waiting for the one for this bike, but they've put the spring and everything, so the sag has been set for me semi-loaded. Um, the the preload adjuster for the rear is adjustable on the bike just with an Allen key. Um, so you know, two or three turns, and the bike's set up from this day day pack to fully loaded, like you're going away for a trip. Anyway, I hope that explains a little bit better, but. Um, any more questions shoot me any, if you want to know something shoot me a question and I'll always reply to you um, we've also got we've got some new finally stepping it up a little bit so we've got some stickers now so if you want to stick up PM me and we'll um, send one out to you so yeah but um, anyway there you can see and the, there's the preload adjuster is this thing and then the other adjuster is that, compression adjuster is that one. And that's same on that side. It's got three settings. I don't know if you can see in there. Zero, three, and six. So that's basically just moving it up and down. Three mil, six mil, or zero. Um, so they probably not really needed. The rear, 100% needed. Um, but yeah, so that's the suspension setup I've managed and before you do it Ride the same track Beforehand go get it done and then ride the same track after don't go to a totally different track because you're not going to get a true True reading of what's happened um, I was lucky enough to do Yango three times before uh, three two three, whatever at least twice before doing the suspension so I had a very good benchmark um, of what it was like and then rode it again last week and after suspension totally different bike um, So it's definitely worth doing. There's plenty of suspension places out there. I use Mal Sato's is a good mate of mine um, But there are plenty of places out there um, So yeah, get it done people So having your suspension done doesn't just mean you can fly along at a million miles an hour. You know, this rock creek bed or whatever you want to call it, you know, rocky technical creek bed. You know, you're not going to be able to go stupid fast, but it keeps the front wheel tracked. Doesn't want to bounce around and deflect heaps. So the suspension is just as important as the slow speed stuff as it is the, the faster stuff. 
you know this creek isn't anything too technical but it's just scraggly sandy you know it just keeps the front wheel planted and good drive through the back it's a good little technical gets the blood the, the sweat going this little one does it's a local one near my house it's not very long but good fun I'm not going to say where it is Anyway, you all get the idea about the suspension. So any questions, hit me up. <laughs>